Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Though the notion of hypersonic flight has been around for decades, its weaponization could transform modern combat. These missiles defy traditional interception systems since they travel at speeds greater than Mach 5. The enormous velocity of hypersonic systems raises a fundamental question. How can governments protect against such a quick and destructive threat? The X-15 hypersonic research program, which made its first flight on June 8, 1959, is regarded as a landmark feat in aviation and space exploration. It was designed as a collaboration between NASA and the United States Air Force to bridge the gap between atmospheric and space flight. This rocket-powered aircraft was designed to endure speeds above Mach 5. The X-15 had a wingspan of 22 feet and a length of 50 feet. And its design included an unusual wedge-shaped vertical tail to maintain stability at the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. Notably, the X-15 program generated extensive data on hypersonic airflows, thermal shielding, and spaceflight control. On October 3, 1967, William J. Pete Knight flew the X-15, which reached a record-breaking Mach 6.7. With pilot Joseph A. Walker at the controls, the program reached its highest altitude of 354,200 feet, effectively surpassing the Kármán line, the barrier between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. The X-15 flew 199 test flights, providing crucial insight for future aerospace improvements. Hypersonic flight has led to the testing of hypersonic missiles, which left humanity with a new set of challenges. For that reason, the Air Force Research Laboratory is the place where new hypersonic systems are tested. The Air Force Research Laboratory, founded in 1997, is the major scientific research and development center for the United States Air Force. On July 21, 2021, the Arnold Engineering Development Complex at Holloman Air Force Base tested a hypersonic sled, which reached 5,300 feet per second on a monorail track. Simultaneously, the AFRL's Morphing UAS for Tactical Adaptable Next Generation or Mutant program transforms missile design. Mutant focuses on increasing missile range and lethality against nimble targets using superior flight control actuation and four-body articulation, which are key components of its revolutionary morphing technology. This technique changes the shape of the weapon during flight to improve performance, overcoming previous design restrictions in size, weight, and power. The program is on the verge of a paradigm revolution, giving missiles unparalleled versatility and precision. At 
full speed, the hypersonic test at Holloman's high-speed test track is a blur. The sled rockets across the desert landscape at Mach 8.6, transforming the 659-mile-an-hour run into a fleeting spectacle, achieving more than a mile per second. Slowed to half speed, the tremendous velocity is still visible, but the complexities of the sled's vapor trail and shockwave interaction become clear. Developing a new hypersonic missile is one thing. Having a platform from which to launch it is quite another. One option is the B-1B Lancer, which has not used its ability to carry and launch missiles externally for decades. The fact that the Lancer can carry its sniper advanced targeting pod externally is a testament to its early days. As the B-1B nears the end of its operational life, it's expected that if and when its external weapons carrying capacity is returned to it, only a small fleet will have that capability. So we have a JASM weapon on the, traditionally the targeting pod pylon on the forward right hard point. So we are demonstrating uh, that the B-1 has the capability to carry weapons and employ them externally. Uh, for the first time, to my knowledge, since the uh, really the 1980s. Another obvious option for the mutant hypersonic missile launch is the tried and tested B-52 Stratofortress. This reliable supersonic bomber has served in the U.S. Air Force since the 1950s and has seen many upgrades. The current model is the B-52H. Its massive payload and long-range capabilities make it an ideal platform for deploying hypersonic weapons. The B-52's capacity to interface with numerous weapon systems combined with a high-altitude ceiling provides it a strategic advantage in deploying these cutting-edge high-speed weaponry increasing the effectiveness of the U.S. strategic deterrent and giving the crew of the B-52 a higher chance of survival thanks to its standoff capability. Another weapon with hypersonic capabilities is the X-51A Wave Rider. U.S. Air Force created the X-51A Wave Rider, a scramjet-powered research vehicle with significantly advanced hypersonic flying principles capable of exceeding Mach 5. The Wave Rider, launched from the B-52 Stratofortress, is designed to burn atmospheric oxygen as fuel, allowing it to travel at unprecedented speeds and distances. Its successful testing demonstrated that sustained hypersonic travel is possible, paving the stage for new, quick global strike capabilities. Thus, the combination of the B-52's deployment capability and the X-51A's cutting-edge speed reshapes the future of strategic air warfare. Cruise missiles and other weapons such as the AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile can be launched from the bomb bay of the B-52H.
This missile was designed to improve the efficacy and survivability of Boeing's B-52H strategic bomber. Continuing the path of hypersonic weapons, the AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon has also been tested for launch from the B-52H. Encompassing a large internal bomb bay, the B-52H can carry various weapons. Its adaptability is built around the conventional rotary launcher, significantly expanding the bomber's smart weapon payload capacity. The CRL's smooth rotary mechanism allows for speedy weapon selection and deployment. These systems have been retrofitted for modern warfare and upgraded to efficiently interact with the AGM-183A, allowing the B-52 to carry and launch these advanced hypersonic missiles, increasing its strategic relevance. It can carry up to 20 AGM-183As on its conventional rotary launcher and underwing pylons. During readiness exercises, weapons load crew members from aircraft maintenance units are responsible for loading munitions on the B-52A Stratofortress. The weapons handling team, which is responsible for arming the B-52 Stratofortress, is put together with personnel from various aircraft maintenance units. During high-tempo preparation exercises, these professional crew members methodically prepare, assemble, and install a wide range of armaments, from precision-guided missiles to free-fall bombs. The AMUs ensure that the Stratofortress's weaponry is combat-ready by closely following safety and operational standards. Their efficiency and attention to detail significantly contribute to the bomber's quick response times in dynamic global threat scenarios. In a time where the word hypersonic is used more often in modern warfare, the U.S. military has proven once again that it's up for the challenge. From the X-51A to the Mutant and the operational AGM-183A, the U.S. is proving that its dominance in warfare is still intact. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.